What name still the divine can call you? <laughs> and he said, yeah. No matter how I drink, no matter how I felt, <laughs> this great river can never run dry. No matter how I drink, no matter how I fetch, Jesus, you are that great river that never runs dry. No matter how I drink, no matter how I fetch, Jesus, you are the great river. I am my parents and the father. No matter how, no matter how. I fetch Jesus, you are that great river that never runs dry. Nature drink from you, eternity drink from you, spirit drink from you, yet you never run dry. Nature drink from you, spirit drink from you, nation drink from you, yet you never run dry. Okay, okay, that never runs dry. We are here to drink again. We are here to fight again. We are here to drink again. We are here to fight. I want you to raise up that sound. I'm here to drink again. I'm here to fetch again. I'm here to drink again. <laughs> from the river that never run dry. Even the sea fetch from this same river. Can you raise up your voices? Can you just lift up your hands? And say, Lord, just you. Out of my belly shall flow river. Rivers of living water, yeah, yeah, yeah. out of my belly, shall flow. Rivers of living water, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. out of Kenya, shall flow. Of living water, yeah, yeah. as the river flows, we begin to bring every death in back to life. You are the life giver river. Oh, let it flow right down, right here. As the river flows, we begin to bring every death in back to life. I am Papa Ratsebala Baba. Oh, because I Baba Hunter. As the river flows, we begin to bring every death in back to life. Oh, my, you are that. Oh, let it flow right now, right. Ah. Can you say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to disappoint me. Oh, you've proven yourself in my life. I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me can you sing it loud you are too faithful you are too faithful to fail me oh Jesus Jesus you are too faithful to disappoint me you proven yourself in my life you proven yourself in my life I've come to realize you are too faithful. If God has been faithful to his you, can you sing? You are too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to fail me. 
Oh, oh Jesus, you are too loving. lift your hands for a moment and just wave your hands to the Lord. Thank him for such a time as this. Thank him for another opportunity. Just give him glory for the blessing of a new day, for the blessing of life. Appreciate God this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to just look at two people beside you. Beside you right and the left and give them a smile and tell them God is taking you into your new season. Joy. Do it with joy. God is moving you into a new season. And you will never remain the same again. Tell I don't know right now take a selfie with me because the next place I'm going you have to take a permission before you do the same. Are you excited because something is about to happen? Then give Jesus some clap offering this morning and have your wonderful seat. Praise God. An atmosphere is created. The stream is there. You get ready to launch in. Praise be to God. We're going to call one of the gospel, one of the powerful gospel singers in this nation. We want you to sit down, relax. Don't be tensed. This is a leadership summit environment. You know, I know some people may say we bring in the flair of church. You see, without God, we can do nothing. So while you are relaxed where you are, you are not under any stress or pressure. Take note where you need to take note because the Holy Spirit will be ministering to you even when the songs are being blessed. Let's welcome with joy, Pastor Tumaini. <laughs> Clap your hands and make him feel welcome. <laughs> stand here uh, but we thank God for the grace that has helped us to stand and to be in such kind of environment so once again let us appreciate Jesus for what he has done for us in the name of Jesus as the Reverend Maja has said I'm Pastor Tumaini a worshipper and a pastor uh, the senior pastor of New Vision Ministries, and I thank God for the opportunity to minister into this gathering. Hallelujah. Amen. Just sit down as I minister by God's grace. If you feel like standing, now you can stand, but no one will force you to stand. So just relax and be blessed in Jesus' name. I honor our fathers in the house, uh, represented by our Papa Peace Mary. We honor you, sir, and all our fathers in the house and the prophets and apostles. We honor you as your sons in the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Na uweza ni wewe Ni wewe Wakuabu 
to convey our apologies that we are running a little late um, because of uh, our guests, our esteemed guests that we are expecting. So we are running a little late, um, but the program is now getting underway by the grace of God. And it is my singular pleasure and honor to bring to us uh, one of the esteemed sons as we wait for our main speakers, um, Reverend Julian Kula and Restoration Apostle Professor Johnson Suleiman. By the way, I want to say the title professor is not honorary. It is earned. So we want to get knowledge from a real scholar. Glory to God. Amen. But before you do that, we want to get a, a slight charge to get our batteries going from one of the major sons of the professor who's also a scholar in his own right to uh, fund the fire. To do what? To fund the fire and to get our brains moving because you're just from bed. Some of us didn't pass by anywhere. You've just come here. You've eaten the breakfast. And when you eat, what happens is blood drains from your brain and goes to your stomach. And your brain starts functioning at uh, a less percentage than it was doing originally. So I want us to welcome the man we know as the bull, Reverend Fidelis, to come and charge our brains and get it functioning at optimum capacity. Celebrate the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to first start specially appreciate God for the fathers in the land. The Archbishop, all the bishops, the apostles, the reverends. Please help me celebrate them. One of the secrets of life we have to learn is that the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. We have a generation where the younger ones can be arrogant about the greatness and the success they seem to achieve. But it will interest us to note that no matter how many new clothes you have as a young man, you can never have more used clothes than your father. And we must note that we may be so strong to appeal the Goliath, but on the day of your honor, they will ask who is your father. Because honors don't just come, there must be a confirmation of connection as it were. When David killed Goliath and he came before the palace, they asked, whose son are you? Because the person who father you determines what becomes of your destiny. So every one of us, as we grow in grace and we catch the zeal and the fire to continue, we must constantly remember that if someone had not kept the place, you would never have met the place. And join me again, celebrate the fathers of the land. Many things dear me to my boss, the Restoration Apostle. One of them is that he's a man who has a value for fathers. In his height, he will continually respect those who through faith and patience has kept on the race and has obtained promises. This morning, by the grace of God, I want to celebrate all the leadership, the organizing committee, the pastors, I want to check, bless God for Bishop Akama and every one of them for what you are doing. Pastor Courage, God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm not the preacher. I just want to make some few statements I have learned as a student of the school of my father and many fathers, as it were, just to push some things forward. Please, don't look at me. Look at, according to divine, look at the God that may be speaking through my mouth. Is somebody happy this morning? You know, this is, um, I believe, is a leadership summit and also is a business summit. Every one of us must understand that I'm Dr. Fidelis, privileged to be the CEO of Figlad Group of Companies and the lead pastor of Omega Fire Ministry, Lagos, America, Western Region 1 and um, Western Region 1 and West African Region 1 the head of all the pastor, pastorate in Omega Fire Ministry worldwide. 
by the grace of God, the director of branding, Omega Fire Ministry Worldwide. I want us to understand that I'm a young man. I may be speaking from revelation knowledge, but I also speak from experiential knowledge. But most times, many years ago, I went to preach in a church. And while I was preaching, I dived into marital matters. Then I wasn't married. And at the end of the meeting, it was heavily revelational. Uh, according to them, I spoke the mind of God and the word of God. And then on my way out of the church, I saw two old couples. They tapped me. The man tapped my shoulders. I said, young man, you are loaded. You are heavy. That was strong. And they asked me, are you married? I said, no. And then the old man said to me with a wife also smiling, the old woman, and said, we pray for you that two years after you are married, you will still be able to talk like you just spoke. <laughs> I didn't understand what they said until I walked into marriage. That's when I discovered that matriculation is not graduation. A sound wedding does not guarantee a sound marriage. You can get married in the moon and when you land, the marriage crash. Because there are principles that makes it work. So it is in the school of business. So it is in the place of leadership. Whether we like it or not, the challenges of our generation and the possible solutions of our generation is directly connected to leadership. Leadership is like having a brand new car produced by a certified producer. You know the brands. I don't want to talk about brands because I wasn't paid to advertise them. But you know good brands. And then the brand new car, let's assume a bus that can see 30 seater bus. And then the bus is brought, brand new bus, tires intact, engine sound, everything okay. And then 30 persons eventually boarded that bus. How many? 30. You agree with me that the soundness of the boss is not important. The success of the journey is not directly connected to how good the boss is, even though it's needed. It is largely connected to who sits on the steering. Because a bad driver on the steering can crash the boss. Many economies are dying. Many things are happening because leadership is lacking. And leadership is not by age, even though it is needed. Leadership is by capacity. Capacity. The capacity to, to accommodate everybody makes you a unique leader. Capacity. In the course of speaking, I made some statement during the program, and I said, it's easier to lead a hungry people very easy. When everybody following you look up to you to eat, it's easier. When they look up to you for sustenance, it's easier. But when you grow, especially in ministry, where you begin to develop children who become independent of you, they have their pocket. They can take decisions for themselves. They have seen money. They have seen power. They have seen fame. And yet you can still keep them together is a sign that you are a leader. Because that is where capacity comes in. Am I talking to somebody here? Do you know there were two leaders in the scriptures? One was called Eli. The other leader was called Saul. I'm not speaking about Eli in the capacity of the dimness of his eyes. I'm speaking about Eli in the capacity of his ability to help someone not to miss it. Are you aware that the success of the younger generation is becoming a threat to certain fathers who don't have the capacity to mentor us? Because the Bible says Saul became scared of David. Saul became antagonistic of David. Why? Because the women began to sing. David killed his 10,000 and Saul take what? It's 1,000. That's why I speak about capacity. But you know when Samuel came to Eli and said, 
this is my situation. And Eli said, I perceive that God is calling you. He said, the next time you hear the voice, say, speak, Lord, for thy father here and for thy servant here. Right? Every one of us must understand, I'm talking from the area of leadership. You must be able to see the strength, the ability of your followers and know how to help them succeed without struggle. Listen to me. In leadership, you may not always have what it takes. Joseph Murillo has never won a trophy. I've never seen him play. I don't know. Those of you who play who watch football. Joseph Murillo is a coach, a football coach. I've never seen him won a trophy, but he has coached people who win trophies. In leadership, there was a leader called Nahobi. Naomi had two sons, so she had what it take to have daughters in law, Ruth and Ophra. But at a point, her source of leadership went. The two sons died. You know what Naomi did? That was when Naomi moved from a leader to a mentor. It was Naomi who mentored Ruth until Ruth met with Boaz. There are times where you feel like you don't have what it takes. No, sir. Leadership at times may not be because of your sons-in-law. It's because of the content of what you carry, either by experience, by knowledge, otherwise, that you are willing to transfer to the next generation. So first of all, I want to believe I'm speaking briefly to leaders. Every one of us must work on our capacity. The worst person, let me say, okay, the worst leader you can be is a leader with a complex problem. Any leader that is easily threatened by his subject or followers will die of hypertension. Why? If you have what I don't have, I should have the leadership power to use what you have to get what I want. The Bible said we are weapons in the hand of the God. So who is God? God is the leader. Who does the job? The weapon. Who uses the weapon? You, the leader, use the weapon. Because, am I speaking here? I was in one of our nations, and a senior pastor was posted to the nation. And the nation coordinator in our ministry is a younger to the guy. And he has given his best to the work. And then the other senior man was trying to get funny. And then he was speaking to me, and I told him something. I said, this thing is simple. I said, thank God that the boy, man you met on ground respects you. I said, that man is like the remote control. He has the buttons. He has the battery. Who are you? You are senior to him and he gives you honor and respect. I said, so if the remote is in your hand, what do you do? Is to genuinely decide the station that should be watched. Who uses the remote? The leader is the holder of the remote. You are not the remote. All you need in leadership is to know the button to press and you watch the station you want to watch. So getting yourself unnecessarily worked up is not a sign of quality leadership. So first, you must develop the capacity to accommodate all. You must see giftings. One time, Papa was speaking, and then one of our father in the lost, my father in the lost strength, is the ability to make the best out of trash. He will say to you, if we were perfect, there would be no need for Jesus. What can we do to bring the best out of them? And the one time we were talking, he said, I know all of you. He said, I know those who are not completely free from the spirit of stealing. I know those who are gifted. He was just speaking. And he said, to those who are not yet free with stealing, I won't put them close to money. Are you aware there are people who are bad with money, but they are very good with organizing? So imagine if you trash the organizer, who does the organizing? So separate the ability to know that this guy is a good prayer warrior, but he's possibly he can be a thief. <laughs> so what do you do? Put him to prayer so we can have a good prayer meeting and separate him from money counting. Because if you put him in money counting, you have messed up his life. 
There are times we keep blaming our children and want to trash the baby and the bath water. But we have not been able to discover the potentials and the areas of their strength so we can channel them to that direction. As a leader, one of the things we must do is to know your people, understand them and know their capacity and know how to use them. There is no body in life that can be a threat to me. Because why? God is not a respecter of persons. What he does for one, he will do for another. Every man has his timing. Your shine can't stop my shine. Shine your shine. And I shine my shine. So I want every one of us to note that we are gathered. Papa speaking in Zambia. I mean, in Boya. Said something. As a leader... You must know what you are doing. Ah, don't let a confused people meet you in your confused state. It will end up in a confused, very serious confused situation. 2010, we're traveling to Sierra Leone. We landed in Longe Airport. In Sierra Leone, you, if you're going to Sierra Leone, you must go through the three major forms of transportation. You go by air. If you land in Longe, you go by land. Then when you get to the sea, you cross by river. So when we boarded the boat, I mean, crossing from Longe to Freetown, and then at the center of the water, if you look behind, you can't see anybody. Look in front, you see nothing. All you see is water. And then suddenly the boat went off. Speedboat. And it will be doing tumbu. Water wave will come. Water will be entering. In my heart, I prayed many prayers. I said, Father, in any way I've sinned against you knowingly and unknowingly. <laughs> in my thought and in my words, Lord, have mercy on me. I repented several times. I forgave those who I forgave before. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny boat boy that was there told us that the engine has packed up and there's no help coming from anywhere. It was terrible. Yeah. I asked myself, now yeah, I want to die so soon. I'm going to lose my beautiful wife so soon. But guess what? As I lifted up my head, this is my leadership message. I saw my father. Then it was this Nokia communicator. He was playing with his phone. He was playing with his phone. And then I remember they said to Jesus, carry us down now that we perish. It's a strength in leadership. For your wife to be scared and you are scared means that trouble don't die. <laughs> so one of the things you must show is that in the midst of your fear, it must not reflect. Because a lot of your followers are looking up for you for confidence to hold on. That singular act paraded gave me strength to know that the case is not over. So in leadership, I'm just talking randomly. In leadership, you must have the capacity to be here. You are like a shock observer. You must observe the shock. And then a leader, if you want to be an outstanding leader, be slow to anger. Be slow to speak. Listen to all the ideas of your people. Make sense from them. They will always respect you. If you are a leader who wants to talk too much, you will empty yourself before you realize yourself. And then that's where C finish comes in. Let your subjects sit down, listen to them. When they talk, draw knowledge. And from their knowledge, make up a summary. And they present the matter. They will be the ones to clap for you. Praise God. I wrote down here a few things. I was supposed to just charge a little on what I titled The Secret of Leadership and Business Success, as I've learned. The secret of leadership success and business success. What is the secret? The secret is simple. One word. The people. Somebody tell your neighbor, say the people. Say it like you mean it, say the people. Say it like a Christian, say the people. If you want to be a successful leader, the people. If you want to be a successful businessman, the people. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, the people. Look, 
study the people, understand the people, and be ready to serve the people, be ready to protect the people, be ready to fight for the people, and you become a leader without struggle. You don't struggle to attain leadership if you have a passion and understanding of people. When Jesus was about to leave, meeting Peter that day, he said, lovest thou me more than this. What did he say? Feed my people. When he said feed my sheep, he was simply saying feed my people. Am I speaking to someone? In Luke chapter 9, if you read from verse 12, he speaks about the parable of the five loaves and the two, the story of the five loaves and two fishes. If you read from verse 12, Jesus had in a conversation with his disciples. He began to ask them. It was getting to evening. And then they said, these people must be hungry. And the disciples said, send them away. And Jesus said, if we send them away, they may die on the road. So what do we do? They said, even if we have money to buy bread, there's nowhere to buy. Not to talk of, we don't even have that kind of money. Listen to me, it is your compassion. Until your compassion gives birth to your passion for people, you don't enjoy the profit that people deliver. The people you refuse to invest in, you may never invest from. So the first thing you must do to people is to find people. The second thing is to develop people. But one of the challenges with our generation, when we meet people, we certainly want to benefit from people. So we end up losing people instead of getting people. Bible said he ordained 12 that they will first be with him before he did what? Send them forth to preach. The mighty men of David were the naughty men of David who invested himself in it. That at his aging times, the Bible says he desired to take the waters of Bethlehem. And the men who were the naughty men of the city, whom he had developed, said to him, you can't try it. You can't quench the light of Israel. And then what did he say? They said, relax. They didn't go to give him any water. They went to give him his specific desired water. Why? They've been groomed. They've been trained. Someone has invested in them. Look at what the Bible said. They said when Jesus died and the disciples, the first time they called, they said they took knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus. And they called them Christians because they were Christ-like. That means he had invested himself in them. Can I say this? Success without a successor is equal failure. If in your absence, nobody can feed the gap, you are not a champion, you are a failure. That means you have not been able to duplicate yourself. I just want to talk to us. The success of a big ministry, the success of a good business is the people. One, I said find them, develop them, train them, invest in them. Not all will be ungrateful. Don't give up on them because of one. Because some of us have been so wounded that we want to avoid people. You can't be great without people. The present president of my country, Nigeria, something happened in Lagos State about a governor who was to go for second term. And there was a disagreement. And then they asked him a question. Why are you not in support of this man? He said, who is a leader? A leader is someone when you are moving, you look at your back and discover that people are actually following you. A leader that has no followers is not a leader. So the strength of leadership is the amount of people you are able to what? To command. It is better. It is safer. It is more beautiful to have people who follow you. Who love you. They follow you because they love you. Not because you compel them to follow you. A few years ago, I had a young man, he's, a, he's, a, he's one of the top workers in BP, British Petroleum, I think so. So I made him an admin in a church setting. He started having issues. And then he was, one time he was talking and said, you know who I am, what I hold? 
The people I control, I call them. I say, you are successful in your office because the people are under compulsion to obey you because they pay them. I say, in church, they are voluntary workers. You need an additional ability to influence people to lead the church people successfully. So you can be the CEO of a company and you are succeeding and you are failing as a pastor. Because while in church, these people are, they are just, I don't, am I using the right word? When you yearn at the man you pay in your office, he is just, okay, sir, okay, sir. Because he has a salary to collect. But there's a way you yearn and somebody who is voluntarily serving God, he will look for another place to serve God. Am I saying something? So you agree with me at this point that it's a risk to be a leader that does not have a tolerance level. The people. The people. Somebody said, I had a great church. The church went down. And we are not here to, I'm not here to talk about spiritual attack. But can I be frank with you? Have you taken time to reevaluate yourself? Your leadership approach to the people. Because everybody is attracted to pleasure. People run from pressure. There's a way your leadership becomes too toxic that people will avoid you. Guess what? Even God had a change of strategy. When Moses came, it was fire, 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 fire. And they would say to Moses, go and meet this, your God. Whatever he tells you, come and tell us. They avoided God in the days of Moses because Moses will always come with fire. Is it true? So when God was to send Jesus, he didn't send him with fire. He came in love and multitude trunked him. So the love from leadership is what attracts the people to you, not just the fire, fire, fire. Use the fire to fight the devil and use love to keep your people. The people, the people, the people, the people. If you love me, feed my sheep. Hear what Jesus was saying from my text scripture. What was he saying? He was saying to them, compassionate Jesus. If we send them away, they will die. Tell them to sit down. Miracles happen cheaply where the leader has compassion. And he fed the people just like that. Let me say this. Number one, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, know that your money is with the people. Your money is with the people. One of the challenges of the African nation is that I believe we are getting to realize we have the human capacity, we have the human resources, we have the natural resources, and we have the market. So there is nothing we, we need to be an outstanding continent that we don't have. Because why? We have the what? The raw materials. We have the what? The population. What is population? The people. The people. If you drop a product in Africa, before you realize it, it's everywhere. Is it true? But do you know that the ability to discover the problem, see, the people's problem is the secret of your greatness. The people's problem is the secret of your greatness. Can I say this? Imagine if God now, let me come from my popular perspective, the church. Imagine as I am now, God just give me special anointing to heal fibroid. Hmm? As I'm coming, I said, we are holding a massive crusade. Jesus will be healing fibroid. And then you have evidence of that thing. You know the way fibroid is everywhere. Eh? Imagine the people, as you come, I just stand. In the name of Jesus who has anointed me, fibroid, go! And fibroid leaves. Eh? There is nothing I'm looking for that someone who just got freed from a possible plague may not be available to give to me. Stop looking. See, Peter's mother-in-law can't cook for you. She's sick. Heal her. She will enter kitchen. And Jesus went to the house of Peter's mother-in-law who was sick of fever. And after he healed her, she entered the kitchen. It is the people's problem you identify 
and you create a solution for that stands you out. What is upgrade of your phone? When they say they upgrade your phone, they only added a new solution to your problem. Is it true? Maybe the first time they made it, they didn't put Bible. So in church, you kept it in the bag. Because they want you to even be distracted in church. So what did they do? They added Bible to it. So every day they update software. For every time they create a solution, they solve a problem. And you know, someone was to buy a phone. And then they said to the person, the storage capacity of the phone determines the amount you pay for a phone. Huh? The amount for a 200 gig or whatever is different from the 500. Huh? So it is the ability, the capacity you have to handle matters that determines the greatness that you become. Before His Excellency became president, he told us many things. That when I come in, I'm going to do this, I'll solve this. Is it true? He spotted the problems in the land and began to provide solutions. Now he's in power. Every day he's sitting down, putting strategy together, tactical teams. What are they doing? They are thinking every day of how to solve problems. How to solve power problem, how to solve this problem, how to solve this problem. Every one of us must know that, listen to me, it doesn't matter your age, even if it's important. Life will look for you wherever you are if you carry the answer to problems. The prison is too small to keep a man who carries interpretation. If you think I'm lying, go and find out what happened to Joseph. He was accused of attempted rape, not of an ordinary citizen, of a well-placed person. But yet, they sent him to prison. When a problem arose that nobody could solve, what did they do? They released him from prison under pressure. Please, as a business person, look for the people you were sent for. Don't waste your time with people you are not sent to. Are you aware there were manufacturers and people who made who produce made products, big countries like America, like America, they were producing, but a particular country came. Guess what they did? Guess what? They discovered that the cost of handling Certain equipment was only meant for the privileged. Is it true? So what did they do? They did the same product for the middle class. And they have more market than any other. Those on top can be counted. Those under is uncountable. So they created what looks like the original for the down class. And that they are making so much money. And today they have become a major influence in our time and generation. Am I speaking here? I came to say to someone, please, if you are a pastor, do your best. People are never tired of a problem solver. But as you begin to seek, either by training, by self-development, by prayer, as you are seeking the next phase of your life, please also develop your character. So that you don't get so terrible to a point where an hungry man will say, if you are the one whose food will make them okay, they prefer to die with hunger. That's what bad character can do. Hallelujah. I started by saying a leader is a driver. A leader is an example. I love First Samuel chapter 17 verse 20. Everybody talk about David. David was unique. David was unique. Because David was unique. What makes David outstanding and unique? Study the Bible. Number one, when David got to the palace, listen to me. It's not difficult to attain. It's more difficult to maintain attainment. To climb cannot be compared to maintaining height. To climb to a height. You can understand the principle, the ladder, the way to climb. But to remain on top is, is more difficult 
than to climb to the top. Because to remain on top, there are many funny factors that plays out themselves. And the Bible says, David behaved himself wisely. It takes wisdom, not strength, to remain on top. It takes wisdom. And wisdom is not rigid. Wisdom is flexible. There are times you choose to lose as a leader just to win. Not every time you must argue it to the end. There are times you keep quiet like you don't know what you're doing. I don't know how true, but I'm just talking from this dimension. A person that was trained by a president suddenly came into his country like an attack. And he played like he was a weak man. Am I speaking here? Because why? If you are in a glass house, be careful when you throw stones. So he did everything possible like a weak man to allow the guy to walk away. And the guy walked away. And a few months later, the guy was said to be dead. We don't know who killed him. Am I talking here? A leader who cannot tame himself will soon lose control. Anger lies in the bosom of a fool. A few days ago in Marriott, Lagos, something happened to two persons. I learned that the policy of that organization is they dare not fight. So they had a quarry and they were fighting. And said, after all, after all. And then when their eye was clear, they were met with sack letters. And the lady was crying and said, I've been in this job for three years. I can't tell. Anger takes away your sense of reasoning. I beg us in the name of God, just know that you are a leader, you are an influencer. Generations are looking up to you. You can't afford to fade them. Your followers don't learn from what you speak like they learn from what you do. What you do. Your body language is stronger than your, your, your vocal language. Understand your actions count as it were. Be organized. I took us to scripture, First Samuel chapter 17, verse 20. Look at the character of a leader. No wonder God was attracted to using David. When they sent for David, do you know the first thing David did? He handed over the sheep to a keeper. <laughs> he wasn't carried away by the call from presidency or the palace. He first made sure the sheep were kept with a keeper. <laughs> Look at it. He said, and David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the what? With the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. He left his sheep with a keeper. That's leadership. That's leadership. Please. One word I came to say in charging is that in your business, in your ministry, let the priority on earth be about the people. Nurture them. Train them. Look for the problem. Look for problem. Let me say something to us. I have multiple places of businesses I sit over. How did they all come? Most of them came. I was holding a crusade. And then I needed a branded crusade. So I went to rent screens. Screen. After renting the screens, the bill was so high. I paid. That was the last time I rented screens. So I took advantage of my supposed lose money. And I did a little study about the business. And I did an importation. And before you know what was happening, I have the screen serving me and producing money. Simple. I saw a problem. It was the problem of the rich. I created a solution. For everyone who wants to go into branding, I started making my money. It's simple. I love cars. I love automobiles. I like driving cars. I had fleet in my compound. So I sat down one day. I said, the way I'm traveling, I'm not even driving these cars. What do I do? So, I registered a company. I turned it to executive. Is it executive chaplain they call it? Huh? Huh? What do they call it? This 
executive cars. Eh? So right now I'm not around. My range, my lessons, all of them are increasing my bank account. You want to go somewhere? I give you my car. The same car that carries me for pleasure, the same car increases my bank account. It's simple. What did I do? I saw a problem. Someone wants to, uh, wants to enjoy themselves. So I've made available the same cars I love to drive to do the job. It does not reduce. Only four suffers. I don't know if I'm saying something. So I saw a problem. I began to create a solution. If I say look for problem and solve them, don't look for a problem that will become a problem to you. Know your capacity. Know the things you can do. Am I speaking to somebody here? God forbid, like somebody who is asthmatic suddenly sees, oh, there are too many crowd who want to eat food. You go and set up a, a manual cooking section. The smoke may end up choking you out of planet Earth. People must eat. People must eat. In business, don't do the business you like. Do the business people will enjoy. Your money is in people. There are many of us who own businesses who give you huge money monthly. A man, I met a man and for four hours we got talking. I was standing for four hours. I didn't realize. The man asked him, how do you earn money? I said, what do you mean, sir? He said, there are those who earn money yearly. In Nigeria, if you have a house on rent, they pay you every year. He said, there are those who earn money monthly. There are those who earn money weekly. There are those who earn money daily. And there are those who earn money every 12 o'clock. And then there are those who earn money every one, one minute. How many minutes? So he asked me, which category do you fall into? I discovered that I was earning money every year. So we started talking and the man spoke to me. And then we began to think of how to now earn money every hour. Earn money every 12 o'clock. You have a tenant. I don't know how your rental system runs in Kenya. There are areas where you pay every month. Is it true? There are those who earn money every 30 days. There are some in another location who earns money every 365 days. But there are people who earn money every 12 o'clock. Once it's 12 o'clock, you are checked out of an hotel room. A new tenant takes over. <laughs> how do you earn? If you own a restaurant... You agree with me that you earn money every five minutes. <laughs> so in business, you should ask yourself, how do I earn? And the best way is to study these people. Create the solution they are looking for. One time the road to Auchi was very bad. Thank God for it now. And then we had the minister's conference and we had the auditorium packed out. I sat down for hours, if not for hours, almost every day. I got thinking, I got praying. What will make people defile all the negative factors that played out themselves that season and still gather? And the Lord said to me, listen to me, the address where power is, is never far. There's no distance to where solution is. There's no bad road. No bad road. Be a solution. Be a solution. Solve problems. Love the people. Care for the people. It becomes a secret of your distinguishment without struggle. By the grace of God, our Father will be here any moment and we are going to be getting for that deep truth for that deep truth. But I want to ask a few questions. Number one, have you discovered your purpose? Number two, are you in your purpose? Number three, do you have the team, the right team? As an Omega pastor, as a ranked man, I can tell you categorically, if I'm in a crusade, there are people, if they are in the entourage of that crusade, I can sleep and come as at timing. 
But there are people, if such persons are not on the entourage, I will have to do extra jobs. Because why I understand the capacity and the ability, the selflessness of certain people. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Let's receive God's servant, our fathers in the house. Celebrate God. Let's celebrate Dr. Fidelis for that wonderful session. Thank you, sir. Please do it well. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Let's welcome Dr. Jane. Please, let's appreciate Dr. Jane this morning. Take your seat. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the Lord. How are you? I normally say that when you ask how are you, you say what? I'm sagacious and quintessential. I have wisdom and sound judgment. Praise the Lord. I want to sincerely apologize that we are starting a bit late. Uh, our spiritual father, the restoration apostle, and the, and the guest, Reverend Julian, had a call with His Excellency, the President, this morning at State House. That's where we are coming from. Uh, his Excellency passes his, his uh, sincere greetings to every one of you. He said he may pass by. ambition, but a profound collective impact guided by timeless wisdom found in the scriptures. Our first insight comes from the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. The Bible says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Leadership requires us to move forward. Even when the path is uncharted, with the unsh with the even when the path is uncharted, with the assurance that our purpose is greater than our challenges in life. Acts chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, the Bible says, and when you uh, when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James and the sons of Alphas and Simon the Zealot, Judas, yes, 
the son of Judas, the son, mm -hmm, let me take that again, Simon and Zealot, and Judah, the son of James. This all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his disciples. This passage describes the disciples returning to the upper room in Jerusalem where they stayed and continued in prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. In closing, let us remember that leadership is not just about achieving goals, attaining success, making money. It's about inspiring others, making a difference, leaving a legacy that echoes through eternity. May we lead with courage, serve with humility, act with integrity, and walk our path with faith. Together, let us strive to be the leaders that our communities need, the leaders that the world deserves. Greatness that has no, that is not generational, is not greatness. If, if the greatness is left in the lives of many others, that's greatness. And so, I want to I sincerely appreciate my spiritual father that you don't only do crusades, you take leaders to the upper room to change our world. So, praise the Lord. So the first speaker to speak this morning is a man that all of us as Kenya know. He's an apostle in the marketplace. Praise the Lord. I want to just, if you allow me to just read his uh, profile. Reverend Julian Chula. Praise the Lord. He's an internationally accomplished business leader. He, he is the founder and the CEO of Adams Group and Delaware Company that opened its offices in Houston, uh, United States, and Kenya. Prior to that, he founded the Mod Group, a fintech company spanning over 26 countries in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East, which was acquired by Digital One in 2018. As a founder, the chairman of Beulah City, Reverend Julian is involved in affordable housing project in Kenyan housing sector. Reverend Julian sits on several boards across the world with links to, the, to global leaders in various sectors. He was recognized in, tw in 2015 by CNBC East Africa. He was recognized as a CNBC East Africa Entrepreneur of the Year. 2012, can we give him a handy clap again? 2012, IBM Global Entrepreneur and top 40 under 40 Kenyan entrepreneur on two occasions. Praise the Lord. He featured in Forbes magazine, Blue Mag International, and the New York Times. As a sought-after speaker, Reverend Julian graced various platforms across the world, including Oxford University, various Silicon Valley events, C CBOs in Singapore and spoke at the Global Entrepreneur Summit in Nairobi with the President Barack Obama. <laughs> Reverend Julian is a husband to Reverend Amanda and a father of three boys, Nolan, Nehemiah, and Noah. He's a convener of Rema Fest, Kenya, and I'm sure all of us know. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, help me make welcome God's choice servant, Reverend Julian Chula. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Hallelujah. It's heavy. <laughs> Glory to God. I want to appreciate fathers in the house of sin and uh, just to recognize you all and to say thank you. I also see great businessmen. I've seen my brother and fellow businessman Solomon in the house. Uh, it's good to see you, my brother, and others. So, karibuni sana. In order to redeem time, I want to just go ahead and kick off and start what I want to share with all of you. To fellow businessmen and countrymen alike, thank you for being here today, from today morning. Father, I pray that even as I share these few minutes with your children, our words shall not disappoint you, Holy Spirit. You shall be our courage, our direction, and even our leader. You said you will not leave us comfortless. You will send to us helper. You sent a helper, Lord, that is just like you. And so we want to come now and invoke that help of the Holy Spirit in the words that we speak and the things that we say. May they be ordained of you to give us direction, courage, understanding, and wisdom. I thank you for your presence here and even the things we shall begin to see happen from the last two days of amazing gathering. We pray that Kenya will never be the same, that will keep increasing from glory to glory, from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I was once interviewed by, by Forbes magazine, and the person that was interviewing me asked me a question. This was in my previous business. It was in capacity as in what I did. I think one of the things I want to say is to all of us as businessmen, businesswomen, <laughs> those of you in careers, I want you to understand that peop what people call is not you, is your chair. Um, you discover that the day you stop working there, that the phone calls that were being picked with two rings are no longer being picked, or you can't hear. Okay, can you hear me now? All right, good. I'll try and increase. I usually start slow and then I increase, but you want me to start the Kamba way, which is start with the climax. <laughs> That is fine. So, so you'll, be, you'll discover one of the things with entrepreneurship you'll discover is um, it can be a very lonely journey. Because in a career, the reason people pick your calls is not because of you. It's because of the position you occupy. I had a friend once who left a very senior position in a phone company. And once they were out, they wondered why people no longer pick their calls. Mm -hmm. They soon realized it was their directorship they were responding to. And the phone rang over 10 times, and they'd call this person over and over again. And finally, they, the person picks up and says, what is it? And they say, oh, it's me. You say, I know it's you. <laughs> but before, they used to pick their calls in two rings. The earlier you can begin to build your journey to relevance, to understanding what it is that God has called us to do the better. So I was being interviewed by this person in my previous business uh, in that capacity, um, and they were asking me some questions. So he asked me, who would you say is the most influential person that you have followed um, that has been a great example for what you've been able to do and the things you've been able to build? So I responded to Forbes magazine. I said, Jesus Christ. He didn't like that answer. You will realize whenever you use those two names together in the marketplace, uh, there is a lot of resistance. So he asked me, uh, okay, let me rephrase the question. Who would you say is alive today that you see as an amazing example of how you do the things you do? <laughs> I said, Jesus Christ. And so he started looking at me like a religious fanatic and said, okay, just let's stop that question. What book would you highly recommend for business people <laughs> to use and to utilize? And I said, the Bible. <laughs> and quickly he realized, I'm not moving. We cannot be ashamed of the kingdom we come from, no matter the things we have to do. I believe, and I don't want to preach because... Apostle is here and he has been ministering in this country for the last two days. And even today he has another appointment for ministry and we want to keep time. But I believe we must understand that there are four to five dimensions of union with God, which is really the key thing. I was teaching somewhere yesterday and I said to them, union is a very important understanding. Because this is not just a relationship between a creator and his creatures. This is not just a relationship between our father and sons. 
there is something bigger that is called union. And when we understand the power of union, union in the life, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of our Lord and Savior, we are seated. He has made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. I'm not ashamed to record anywhere I am. I am first a believer Amen. and then a businessman. And this has to become a practice that we are not embarrassed about where we belong. Because he has made us to sit, must, we must do research about this place that he has made us to sit. This heavenly place that he has made us to sit requires a bit more intelligence and research from the children of God. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that not be, need not be ashamed, rightly dividing. That right division of the word of God will bring you into a place where you will, in a scholarly understanding, be above your peers in the things that you put your hands to do. You will appropriate scripture properly, even for business. And I can assure you, there's no better guide for the things you need to build like those things. So union in ascension must be studied because Jesus is not on the earth. Jesus ascended and sent us a helper. He is with us even though he is not here. So we must study this place that he has made us to sit because we don't sit there when we die. Men actually sit there that are alive today. So I believe in the dimension of kingdom business and kingdom exposition in matters of business. There are some of us who are going to operate in Joseph dimensions. And so I was sharing with Apostle today that I'm so grateful for the team that took us to State House. But I'm one of those people that's very wary of going to State House. I'm wary because I want to go there with solutions. I don't want to go there when I'm not carrying something that will make people sit down and listen so that we bring solutions of the kingdom there. Let me kick off this presentation. I hope you can see the screens next to you. The words I'm talking about today is passion. Passion is from the Greek word maxo. It means to suffer. It's a very strong feeling about a person or a thing. So passion is an intense emotion which has to come from a place of enthusiasm or desire for something. You must want this thing so bad so that a consistent pattern is seen. There are certain things we have to solve in this life. And with Apostle's permission, I'm going to show you a little bit of a slide after this that is some of the solutions God has given some of us to bring as blueprints for the kingdom of God. You know, in the kingdom of God, every joint supplies. Every joint supplies. Some are given particular responsibilities. Others are given particular responsibilities. If I stand and try to do everything that apostle is doing, I'll be frustrated. But if I learn what I was created to do, and I come to join him in what he is doing, every joint supplies. Be content with the joint you were made. And become good at the joint you're supposed to be. Because your absence makes the other joint overwork. Okay. So, four solutions. There are some solutions that have to come from a place where we understand this passion. And passion takes love. It takes time. It takes devotion. So, the businesses we come up with must be born from a place where we are solving a particular problem that is, that is driven to design solutions. Doing a business to become a billionaire is not a strategy. Solving a problem will bring that wealth and bring that abundance that you are seeking to build in that area. So there are four strengths of a designer. I once had the privilege of visiting Apple and Google back in the day when they were just beginning certain elements. And they had these people in their offices that are called seers. In the church, we call them prophets. Uh, and they had these seers. Some were Indian, some were of interesting origin. Their offices were very interestingly designed. These people were there to do nothing but to sense. They were paid very big salaries to sense. That even the design of a phone, they had to sit down and sense, is this the right way? To position this thing. And when they are put in place. Their work is to just meditate the whole day. You nobody pays you to meditate. 
But there are people who are paid ridiculous sums and figures to meditate as to whether this is the solution. Ladies and gentlemen, business is more spiritual than you think. So, empathy, intuition, imagination, and idealism. If these four elements are not warped, are not, are not weaved into your thought process. So, when I see my friend here who's doing real estate, he has brought real estate differently. He's solving a problem. He's not building to just be wealthy. He has thought through the four strengths of a designer. That that phone, that solution, that thing that you're bringing, you've thought through it beyond even just um, your market. You've thought through it from a global perspective. So, we then must believe for a revolution that will be attained through godly ideas. That means that I come from the school of thought. I'm always ready. I have a boardroom full of people who don't agree with me. I'm not in the business of finding yes men around me. I have intelligent women and men around me that are able to tell me this is not the right direction. Because in coming up with some of those things, I had again a privilege of meeting with uh, Bill Gates um, about seven or six years ago. They invited me to their offices. We sat down. Then I saw the people around him. They were yelling at him. They were talking down to him. I said, Oi, this is Bill Gates. Interestingly, I had the opportunity on the same trip to go to Mexico and meet Carlos Slim's family. And the same thing was what I was seeing. I said, if the wealthiest people can have people who don't agree with them, and they don't disagree dishonorably, they disagree from a point of view to say solutions require us to have people around us that may not agree with how we are doing something. But when we look at these godly ideas, finally you have to then hold the responsibility to make the decision you have to make because as a leader you'll have to do it. So we must use our imagination. So this is what I want to say. The gathering I'm seeing happening in Africa, in the world these days, is a gathering that I believe is different from the gathering of our fathers. Let me explain. If I'm to follow biblical teaching properly, there's a difference between a father who is Moses and a father who is Joshua. Hmm. Moses has a season and God does something with Moses in Moses' season. Joshua has a season and God does something in Joshua's season. Please come with me. When I see the meetings Apostle is holding across Africa, across the world, I'm sure I'm a joint that can be beneficial to Apostle. I'm not looking for a job, please. I want to explain something. Because I know sometimes in meetings like these, people pitch and do all manner of things. But I believe that the gift he is to the body of Christ, if every joint is to supply, we must understand that the sons of Issachar understood seasons and times. So, in our father's time, when we look at Archbishop Ida Hossa, when we look at uh, Kina Papa Mamboleo here in Kenya, when I look at what the fathers were gathering for in the day of um, uh, T.L. Osborne, in those days, spiritual matters notwithstanding and taking priority, I believe there's a difference between a Moses season and a Joshua season. In this way, a Moses season does not require you to fight. A Moses season is endowed mostly with deliverance. Deliverance from a particular place to a particular place. Are you understanding? Now, the season of deliverance is different from a season of settling. The two of them are very different in terms of their structure and what it is that is required. So, we must be careful not to do a Moses thing in a Joshua time. Because he said, just as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Not what I did with Moses. Because with Moses, I parted the whole sea. But with Joshua, you have to get wet. Now, a Joshua season requires people to understand that there's a collaboration required with heaven for some of the things we need to do. Manna will not just fall. I'm trying to tell Christendom, the days of taking a child who looks malnourished, put five flies on the right side of their face, fill their face with ash and make them look poor, take pictures and travel to the rest of the world to ask for aid, those days are over. Africa has come into a season when we must bring the smart brains and minds of the children of God because 
I'm sure Apostle agrees with me that we cannot be in a perpetual state of deliverance. You cannot come to the altar 65 times for the same problem. So we must have a journey after deliverance. <laughs> so after, after the scorpion has come out, after the deliverance, after the demons have left, try to come back to the clean house and you told them this is not your house and the house is still clean. Where do we go from there? Africa has come of age to now ask the question after deliverance, now what? So that we don't appear to President Biden and to the king in England as beggars, but appear as solution givers contributing something to the world. So, he says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you. And I'll tell you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. All right, let's go on this journey. So, I'm trusting God through collaboration because we're now in a season that has to be kingdom conscious. This is not a season about whose church and whose church. This is a kingdom moment. Because it's going to be collaboration, not competition. Did you hear what I said? Because for us to do global business, I need apostle and apostle needs me because where I have the wherewithal in the area of um, technology and banking infrastructure and real estate and he brings me the grace that God has given him. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2. He says, have you not heard of the dispensation of the grace of God that was given to me for you? I found that scripture so revelational that it's actually true that grace does sit on men for men. That the anointing you have, nobody can necessarily, the grace, the, the anointing, the portion of anointing God gave you, nobody can necessarily take that from you. you. You build it, but there's a grace that sits on other men, for men. But it must be caught by verse 3 of Ephesians 3.3. 3. How that by revelation. So revelation has to be involved in understanding how some of these things work. I want to come to my, so the leader of Dubai said something that caught my attention because I admire these guys in Dubai. You can, you can love me or hate me for it, but you know, even when I go to their airport, there's just a way they're adorned that makes me think this must have been what made Queen Sheba faint because when she saw how even the waiters were adorned, breath left her. When I see that white that they wear, and even I'm, I'm with somebody and they're wearing white, I say, your white is different from this white. So I asked the sisters to help me to tell me what kind of white is this? And they answered very well because men, you don't know that there's a difference between white and white. But ladies will tell you, what white is that, ladies? Thank you. I knew that the ladies will answer. It's called brilliant white. When you enter the airport in Dubai and you start to see how they're adorned, I mean, you have to do some research to ask some things. So I happened to have a very interesting meeting. I was in a meeting in Qatar a few years ago. I was invited. The second largest fund in the world is called the Qatar Investment Authority. The fourth largest fund in the world is a Catholic Relief Fund. So you have to study some of these people and understand how they've been able to build. Apostle and I were discussing today and I said, you cannot... Individual wealth cannot compete with communal wealth. Hmm. The biggest death in Christianity is individualism. All of us are on our own. So, communities come from their war-torn countries into our country. They operate as a community and they begin to take over territory as a community. While you and I are in our own individualism. I'm coming to an address near you in a minute. I, I have to, today, today is, is the only day some of us may be able to meet, but this is our biggest undoing in the kingdom of God. Individualism has brought us to a place of mercy. That's why you will all be emptied from South B, South C, East Lee, and ladies and gentlemen, CBD is gone. Our central business district is being bought. So, so when I'm an individual and I want to buy a building in town, I think about many things. The asset, the value of this asset, how is it going to work? Um, and, and how is it going to... But when it is communal, community thinks different. They say we are taking the city. So every building must be bought. So the moment one building is up in town, they are buying. 
Right now, this community is the biggest negotiator for two malls in our, country, in our city. So they've already got a mall in the east. They're now negotiating for two, one on the north side and the other one is on the south side and they're the top negotiators because they're going to go ahead and make sure that they have a north gate, a south gate, an east gate, and a west gate. Communally, they have the buying power. Hmm. So, Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum says, to be creative is to add something new to life as opposed to being a passive part of it. So, we don't want to just be maintained. We must now become a part of the organism that brings a solution to the problem. Are we still together? I don't want to go through these uh, slides necessarily right now. Let me just, um, this, 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 this would have been quite long and quite complex, but I want to come and deal with this slide. So, what must a Joshua do in a Joshua time? Because trust me, You've not heard me say there's anything wrong with Moses. Mm -mm. But a Moses mindset in a Joshua time is dangerous. Listen. It means that I would love to collaborate with Apostle to start asking very pertinent questions. When we sit and we talk, as a few of us in Africa that God is beginning to raise, we must ask certain questions about where is it going? So when we gather, we say the gatherings are great. 40, 50, 100,000, 200,000 people we have gathered. But this gathering must lead to something. Mm. The thing disturbing me, and that has disturbed me for two years, is what are the gatherings for? Because I'm sure the gatherings are not to make us feel good. When God gathered our fathers... What was required across the entire continent is that men will get saved. What was required was that we all get on a particular journey. The gathering of our generation. Yes, we continue from where the fathers have left, which means the things they did, we still do. But there must be something else God wants to empower because ladies and gentlemen, other people have sat and are strategizing. I had a Family that came to my office not too long ago from the Somali community. I can tell you because I told them I'll use their story. And then I'll come back to the Qatar story. And <laughs> they were very, I mean, extremely wealthy family. I had done my research and I, I asked them a very simple question. Because it was an old man and his son. The son is very well educated. London education has come back, is now running the family wealth and everything else. Billions and billions of shillings worth of wealth. I asked them, what, what, what... Um, because, you know, if you're going to take their money, you have to ask how they made their money. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked them, how, how did you build your wealth? And so the Mosaic went to the bathroom. I asked the son. The son said, oh, no problem. I'll tell you. He said, 11 years ago, my father uh, got the opportunity to be the sole provider of sugar for 60,000 Somali families here in Kenya. Sugar only. Over 30 billion shillings in one bank account here. Sugar only. Serving community. I was sitting in one of the malls and we were sitting at my friend's restaurant and we were looking at cross at another restaurant. My friend's restaurant was pretty empty. And I sat with my brothers and I said, look across. What do you think is happening? That restaurant was full. This one was empty. This restaurant of my brothers is owned by a Christian. So we asked him, he said, yeah, it's hard. You know, we are trying, we are pushing, we are pushing. But I looked across, those people are not pushing. It's full. You know who was in that restaurant? Community. That they've made up their minds, this thing will not fail. Because his failure is my failure. Individualism is our greatest undoing. I, I was in Qatar. I sat in a room like this in Qatar. I'd been invited by an amazing man. And um, this is the fourth man in power in Qatar. And we sat down and he had this big living room. And he, people were coming in as we were eating. We ate from 6, 6 p.m. We were eating appetizer one, appetizer two, appetizer three. Meal number one, two, three. Eh, de, 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 de. Adding, adding, adding. People were coming in. So at about midnight, they're bringing more food. I said, please don't. Then when we are there, I sat and we asked him. I asked him, look, 
Thank you for feeding us. I saw, Apostle, I'm sure you've been in this place, where the food was coming with four people had to hold trays. Yeah, that is the sitting room. What you're seeing on the screen there. Thank you, whoever. My people must be on, on top of things. Thank you, Alex. So, so we are sitting. So I'm seeing traffic from 6 p.m. to midnight. Bam, bam, people coming in, going out, coming in, going out. Finally, at midnight, I said, listen, my friend, you have to tell me. Who are these people? I've been watching hundreds of people coming into your house over and over again. So we had eaten, we had finished, we were now outside. I asked him, who are these people? He said, ah, I'm a community leader. So I'm supposed to make sure people don't have a problem in my entire community as the leader. They can come, they can go and eat, they can take a hot shower, they can put their clothes to be washed, and I'm not supposed to ask them who they are. I wondered. Then he turned. The, this is the rebuke. He turned to me. He said, but you are a priest, no? I said, yes, I'm a priest. Ah, but this is kitab. Are you not a man of the kitab? I said, what are you talking about? Yeah, we learned this from Abram. <laughs> I started wondering if I even know if my member has eaten. Ladies and gentlemen, there are places we are not going to go if we do it alone. And Satan's greatest trick in making sure we don't progress, even if we have large gatherings, has been a spirit of individualism. So we are divided on certain things. I have a friend in Ethiopia, an amazing man of God. He has written a paper. He's actually defending it at Oxford this weekend. And we are doing our best to support him. Because this kingdom must gather its intellectuals, must gather its um, 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 great men of God, must gather. Because trust me, the kingdom has extremely smart people. Hmm. Please, how am I doing on time? Okay, you, you, have, you have to, I'll do another 10 minutes so that Apostle can speak to us. Okay, so I'm, I'm sitting in, um, where was I? Ethiopia. My friend in Ethiopia has written an amazing paper. It's a great exposition. And he's an intellect, but he's a Christian intellect. Because trust me, some of the debates we need to have, even at the highest offices, require our intellects to go and speak for us. So he's written this amazing paper. He's going to defend it in Oxford, and then after that, I believe he'll be defending it in Harvard. And the paper goes something like this, that Christianity, the biggest undoing in Christianity is that people have a mind library that is completely horizontal. So in such a library, they've got an understanding of how things should be. And their faith and conviction about how things should be is on that horizontal line. Which means if you take one book out, they don't agree with you on anything. So we've never been trained in Christianity to have a difference of thought on a particular matter and sit and debate it to an end. We take a hard stance about how somebody has received a revelation. Just because truth has not been revealed to me does not mean it is untrue. <laughs> so, so this library has been the greatest undoing. So we find ourselves disagreeing on very small things. I don't believe we should disagree on things like tithe because when we arrange the gospel, Paul says that there are things of primary importance, which means there are things of secondary importance. So he's defending his paper to say you need to have almost like a pyramid way of looking at the Bible so that the things we cannot disagree about are principally there. For instance, we cannot disagree on who Jesus is. We cannot disagree that he came, that he died, that he rose again and that he is ascended and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. If we disagree on that ground, let us forget this thing completely. If we disagree on the fellowship of saints, in other words, the Apostles' Creed is a primary importance matter. The fellowship of saints, the communion of saints. Are we together? So, then we come to some secondary items. Now, those we can debate about. My faith and what you do should not be affected by secondary matters. We can debate those. So Priscilla and Aquila can meet with Apollos for dinner and debate intellectually and not be offended that we have different views, but let the Holy Spirit guide us. 
So, our bias requires us to learn and learn and relearn. Because when you have a Moses mindset in a Joshua time, you can be dangerous to a generation. You can try to do living Egypt things when you should be doing settling Canaan things. I hope you've caught me. So you must ask God when you're alive to give you the intelligence. For instance, for instance, I believe this is a season because of that dimension of spiritual intelligence that God is releasing to us. This is a season when we must ask God to give us an understanding of how to handle Esther's. Because if Esther is put purely under the hands of Elijah, Elijah's temptation will be to raise an Elisha. But Esther is for the palace. So Elijah must have the confidence to collaborate with Mordecai. And not be intimidated by Mordecai. Because you have to have a Mordecai to train Esther for a palace. Okay. So, in our time, we must do this one thing properly. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark, which means there's something called, please forgive my going into, there's something called doxology. Doxology means my practice of how I do my, how I worship God. That doxology is influenced by my Faith. But faith comes by hearing. Which means if I'm hearing wrong, my doxology will be wrong. I lived in Houston for some time and NASA was there, headquarters of NASA. And they say if a ship takes off, if a rocket takes off to go to the moon and it is off by one degree, that it will miss the moon and land on another planet. So it means I can be sincere in my faith, but I am sincerely wrong. There would be no need for Jesus to say, you have worshipped what you don't know. Worship is sincere. So I must ask God to put me in the right tutelage. The right pupillage to be able to attain the things I must attain. So, so that I don't press. We must press toward the mark. A lot of believers are pressing. But they are reaching 55 frustrated. Because they are pressing but it's not toward the mark. So two things are being used. Time and energy. My friend, those are the only two assets you have. Time and energy. To build a business takes 7 to 10 years. A good business. Don't be fooled. This business in one year thing, if you're going to establish a strong, sustainable business, seven to ten years, for those of us who have built businesses, we can tell you that is the journey. You may not like what I'm telling you right now. That is the secret to success. Seven to ten years. And that is if it succeeds. If it doesn't, you have to start another one. Which will take you another seven to ten years. So most of us, in life, by the time we get the intelligence of how to do business, have at least two bullets in us. Because at the age of 60, if you decide to start a business, the book of Lamentations, I believe chapter 3, says that it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. So, we must seek God's wisdom on how to press. Now, why does collaboration become an important thing? Because when you walk in Christianity, true brotherhood, you can step on my shoulders and borrow my 20 years. Which means, if you really understand how grace works and how those things work, you don't start where I started. We begin from where I am. Which means you have the advantage of time and the advantage of experience to bring to your advantage. So, the enemy will make sure that we are fighting one another to not understand these dimensions. Because how is it that the continent with the highest people saved per capita has the highest infant mortality rate, the highest poverty rates? We have not figured something out. But we must take time to study it. Hence why I'm so impressed with the apostle for setting up a meeting of this nature to be able to have a conversation sometimes in the kingdom we are not having. We press toward the mark. Not press toward anything. Don't just start a salon because you want to start a business. You must hear the Holy Spirit that this is the thing I'm supposed to start. And then as a community, we must commit and say this salon cannot fail. Yeah. 
So here are four or five things I want to give you. You must have creativity very quickly. I won't delve into it. You must have courage. You must have grit. The ability <laughs> to wake up every morning. They say entrepreneurship is someone putting his face out and volunteering for people to slap every day. <laughs> you must have focus. And we must trust God for speed. We must also become intelligent enough to put together the information required. Because as you build a business, I want you to know God is not a Kenyan. So your mind does not have to be limited by your borders. So when I've built everything I've built, I start in Kenya, I pilot in Kenya, I scale. Kenya is usually my piloting ground. It's never my limit. And how do I do it? Today you're here with people from Nigeria, from Cameroon, from Tanzania. I can see them here. I can see people from, you know, different parts of the world. They're here. So our gathering must also produce relationships. Because after I've piloted in Kenya, the person I'll call is the person I met at this meeting. Okay. Albert Einstein said we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. So Apostle, I'll take two minutes to show you something God has put in my heart that I've begun here in Kenya. With your permission, sir, is that okay? Okay. Can I just jump to the other slide? So God put something in my heart from around January last year. I was working with this. I was dealing with something. I, I just felt the gathering is for a reason. I looked at this great man of God. I asked myself, how can I be a solution to the next step? Because we have to utilize that marketplace grace and the kingship grace to understand that the priesthood and the king are coming together. The apostolic and the prophetic presbytery are coming together. So God put kingdom commonwealth in my heart. And kingdom commonwealth has come to disrupt something which is basically individualism. To break the bounds of individualism. And within Kingdom Commonwealth, we're dealing with certain things. Out of a study that was done of the most expensive schools in Africa, out of the top 100 expensive schools, over 45 are in Kenya. Out of the top 20 most expensive private schools, 15 are in Kenya. Out of the top 15 private expensive schools, 11 of them started as missionary schools. Which means, nothing wrong with that. They became expensive after the missionaries finished doing what they needed to do with their children. Then they realized, Coca-Cola likes what we have. UN likes what we have. Can we use, they're willing to pay $4,000 a semester. Can we use that to fund our missions? And they found that it is a viable project, which means what we have is good. I've never had people ask, where was the mosque? In all the years, when things happen in a country, I never hear, where was the mosque? I never hear them ask, where was the shrine? Everybody asks, where was the church? Which means, even them, innately they know that the solution is in the kingdom of God. So, God started putting something around transforming Africa together in my heart. We have to deal with Limited access to housing. We have to deal with healthcare challenges. Lack of opportunities. So I have couples in my churches that have taken their children to London, America for school. They come back here, graduated, summa cum laude, honors, and cannot find jobs. I think there are some altar calls that are in the hands of men. Hmm. Let me explain before you look at me and wonder what doctrine that is. Jesus grew, Luke 2.52, I think. Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, favor, with God and with men. I think there are some prayers that are in the realm of men. 
There are some answers to some prayers you pray that are in the hands of men. Are we together? Yeah. So, there can be a time in the kingdom where none of us is lacking work. Hmm. If we remove me, 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 from this system, and let me tell you, I've seen too many kingdom people come to me to tell me I've got an investor. I have people that want to put money in my business. I can look at their document in a minute. I don't want to tell them not to take that money because if I do, they think I'm jealous. But I can tell. The fine print is showing me they are signing over everything they have to these people. Some of the smartest friends I have in Kenya have all lost their companies. They took money that had come with interesting fine print. And as much as it's exciting in the beginning, we must teach our people the trade of not taking the wrong capital. Okay. So, I don't want to spend too much time on this. But God has given us a vision. If you want to find out more, you can go to kingdomcommonwealth.com. I'm not here to pitch it. I don't want to use apostles meeting to pitch anything. And it is not a pitch in terms, it is awareness. What could the solution be? I believe God has released to some of us the blueprint that has to work in collaboration with the servants of God that are doing amazing gathering for us to combine this thing so that if we have Kingdom Commonwealth Bank in Kenya, it is Kingdom Commonwealth Bank in Nigeria, it is Kingdom Commonwealth Bank in Uganda, that the apostles are now gathering to discuss kingship, <clears throat> that the schools are everywhere that the homes are affordable, that we own the cement companies, the steel companies, that we own certain things together as a community, that when they come to our CBD and they make a bid for a building, we are next to them. In one of my meetings for Kingdom Commonwealth, I had, I had um, the marketing director of Shell come and speak to us because he's, he's joined what I'm trying to do. And he said, this is what the communities do. He said, they have over 45 petrol stations. That just in one year, we did for them 45 petrol stations. Which you go, you Christians, you fuel there. And you make sure that they can buy out the building in CBD. And then they kick out the church. They are not enemies. They are just organized. And sometimes you have to study that system to understand that it is actually our system but it is being used against us what if we could build something that could change how we are being looked at in this model of what we've put together we've put together some partnership with government because of putting money into government infrastructure bonds and therefore the next time i meet the president i'll be telling him we'll be putting five million dollars every month into the government infrastructure bond for the next 10 years now I'm a partner in helping you pay the Chinese. So when we meet, it's not for selfies. It's for kingdom business. So that the next time, because Apostle, can I say something? When we went, when we, when we had our elections, and this, I love our president because he did it such a good heart. When we had our elections, our president invited us all as men of God to go and pray. He was doing a thanksgiving. I really enjoyed it. So we went there. The fathers were so happy. It was a combination of fathers and sons. We were over 4,000 of us. Then he stood up after the ministry had happened. He said, listen, this is your place. And we were so happy. He said, walk everywhere. You should have seen us. Kisho, Kaprados, every corner. <laughs> dealing with every demon. At some point as we were walking, the president had to go. He was meeting someone from this other community to discuss national matters. So we were good walking around. <laughs> but we are not inside. <laughs> Nehemiah says, come, let us rebuild the walls of Africa so that we may no longer be a reproach. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the time you've given me to share this few minutes with you. Apostle and grateful.
Please, let's give Reverend Julian a big hand clap, please. I don't know. Why did you stop? <laughs> I was just having a good time. Let's be seated. My God, that was mind-blowing. That was awesome. Thank God for the anointing. But an anointed ignorant man is a powerful fool. <laughs> when you do not know. The Bible says then shall they follow on to know. Amen. I actually think in my own estimation that every preacher should have the mindset of an entrepreneur. There are some people, no matter your prophetic anointing, they will never drop an offering. But what is wrong if you have a restaurant by the church? What they don't drop as an offering, they, they come there to eat. Sometimes when we have the crowd, we don't even know what to do with them. So there are people that will never, never give an offering. It's just who they are. It's a generational thing. <laughs> they will never. No matter what you say, no matter the anointing on your life. But as they, they, they walk out of the church, they want to go to a fast food. What is wrong in you, the pastor's wife, owning the fast food joint? So that's the mindset that we do not have. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for Reverend Julian. That was very, very intense. Amen. Okay, let's, let's consider something which I... Proverbs 30 from verse 24 to 28. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 30 from verse 24 to 28. There are four things which are little on the earth. Don't forget, they are little on the earth. But they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong. Yet they prepare their food in summer. The rock badgers are, people, are, are feeble folk. Yet they make their homes in the creek. He's talking of the cornies. The spiders skillfully. The locusts have no king. Yet they advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasp with his hands. And it's in king's palaces. So wisdom for greatness. It takes wisdom to assess greatness. Wisdom. And there are three dimensions to extract wisdom. Three ways to get wisdom. You get wisdom from scriptures. Don't forget, he says, since that was a child, he was talking to Timothy. That was known the Holy Scripture that is able to make thee wise unto salvation. So the first way you extract wisdom is being addicted to the scripture. You can't be a foolish child when you serve a wise God. God is the epitome of wisdom. The second way you get wisdom is by prayer. If any man lacks wisdom, James 1 verse 5, let him ask of God who giveth liberally unto all men. So when you pray, you obtain wisdom. But the third way you get wisdom is by relationship. Proverbs 13 verse 20. Is he that walketh to the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So you get wisdom by having the right connections, the right relationships. Amen. Amen. The, 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 your, your, your locality can affect your mentality. That is why if you take a child out of a slum to a highbrow location, the mindset changes. Some people will pay anything to maintain the status in the city. Not necessarily because of show up, but because of mentality. They will pay anything to just stay in a place where they have colleagues who think like them. Because if you take your mind into the palace, your body will follow. You must first take your mind into the palace. Then your body follows. But there are many people waiting for their bodies to go into the palace and their mind is far from the palace. Wisdom. Wisdom. We are the generation that has become so advanced. It's beyond just speaking into, you know, one day I was preaching and I thought I was preaching well. I was doing a study on the eagles. I spoke about the eagles, that the eagle flies the highest. That's what I learned when I was in school. The eagles fly the highest. They have the power of sight. They have, they have projection. It's the bird that has the highest acceleration. I said that with so much passion. When I finished, a 200 level university student sent me a message. He said, I don't know if I can say something and I will not be punished. I said, yeah. He said, the ego, sir, doesn't fly the highest. 
the bear that flies the highest is the griffon vulture. I felt like dying. <laughs> Meaning, even when you are preaching on the altar, there are people fact-checking you. That's the generation we are in now. He says the griffon vulture. I had to go and find out. And it was the griffon vulture that flies the highest. So there are still some of us who think the eagle, and we, we, we give all kinds of titles, eagles anointing, eagles emergence, guardian of eagles. <laughs> are you following what I'm talking about? So you'd see that we are in a generation that is moving with so much speed. So much speed. When I communicate with my son, sometimes I can't catch up. Some things he says, I don't understand. I told him, I said, how was your exam? He said, easy peasy. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> I said, easy peasy. Okay, I just assumed. I said, oh, nice, nice, nice. I had to go back. What is easy peasy? That's the generation they are in. So we must be extremely deep and detailed because you do not get, you don't get shack on shallow waters. That's why he said to Peter, go to the deep. Luke chapter 5. He said, go to the deep. There are many ministers today, when I see them ministering, I just size their ministers. Six, 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 seven years, this one will expire. Because there's no depth and there's no pursuit of depth. The place where we read, let me show you something. Okay, Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Let me show you something in verse 6 and verse 7. Like um, Reverend Julian did, I will apologize for starting late. Do, now look at this. Can we, can we read it together? Want to go? Okay, so the first thing he said, do not give. Now look at verse 7. Now there's a problem. Verse 6, he said, don't give. Verse 7, he said, ask, you shall receive. So it seems to me God sat in heaven and had meeting with two entities. This first one, he told them, please, don't give to, to swines. Don't give to dog. There are some people I'm going to give an instruction to ask and it shall be given to them. But please, if they ask, don't give except they have two qualities. Oh. When he was done with that meeting, he went to send the next people. Say, please ask. It shall be given. He had given instruction to an angel to say, don't give. So you are wondering, why am I asking and not getting? It's because there are two elements in you. You are either a dog or a swine. So he's trying to say, it, it, now he has two meetings in the boardroom of heaven. And he says, please, you are in charge of giving access and giving delivery of goods. Do not give to PLs. Do not give to swine. They will trample it underfoot. Now he comes to us. And he says, ask. It shall be given. Six. So you are wondering, how come I'm asking, I'm seeking, and I'm knocking, nothing is happening. It's either you're a dog or you're a swine. So you begin to study, who is a dog? What is a dog? What is a swine? Are you following what I'm talking about? If you understand what a swine is, its head is perpetually down. So until you learn how to lift up your head, no matter what you ask, you don't receive. His head is perpetually down. There are people who are asking for certain dimensions of grace and impact, even in business. We are in a generation, like Reverend Julian, you blessed us. You blessed us. There are people that are so addicted to the old wine. They are very traditional in their mind. Even in church, it has become stereotype. Opening prayer, praise, worship, choir administration, Sunday service, offering. It's a stereotype. Even the Holy Ghost can't interrupt the service. <laughs> it's so serious. Even the Holy Ghost. So, so, no! We are supposed to do opening prayer now. No matter the move of God, we have to curtail it so that we can do what is on paper. I tell pastors when I educate them, I said, when you're ministering, the anointing is strong. Stop! You must not finish what's on paper. When the Holy Ghost interrupts a meeting, move with that flow. But we have become so traditional and orthodox in our mind. Am I talking to somebody here? So it's very, very important that we begin to have a proper understanding. Now, he talks about, he said there are four things that are small on the earth. Fourth, he said the ant. So the first wisdom for living is understanding the dimensions of the ant. There's something about the ant. It prepares its meat in summer. The ant is proactive. The biggest problem of Africa is waste. You will see a man that has not made so much profit. December is going for vacation. You are wondering, vacation for what? You have not made much profit. You are going to Dubai for vacation. Vacation for what? And it affects every facet of life. Sometimes when I see people complain about the church, when they just want to cast 
as passions on the church. You see, the problem is of, of, of Africa is religion. That's not true. It's not religion. They say, oh, China, China, oh, look at China. They are not religious. But look, no, that's not true. China is religious. China has over 200 gods. Project that. But we will project every nonsense. We post all nonsense online. China has 200 gods. What you are talking about, about religion? Now, this, they just had their head fee tree, the Muslims. They had a long time to fast. Throughout the whole period of fasting of Julian, if you go to Qatar, you can't have breakfast. They'll tell you they are fasted. The whole country. I called a friend from Dubai. I said, have you had breakfast? He said, no, no breakfast in the hotel. They are fasted. What's more religious than that? But Dubai is developed. So the problem is not religion. The problem of Africa is leadership. Yeah. It's leadership. It's leadership. Now you think there's no corruption in America. There is. But an American politician will steal money and use it to open a company in America. So it, 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 it takes stuff and opens, opens an organization in the same country. A leader in Africa takes money and buys a house in Dubai. You follow what I'm talking about? So at the end of the day, we are taking our common collective patrimony and we are establishing and developing other nations. Africa is not proactive. The ant prepares for, ahead of time. It prepares in summer. It prepares for the rainy day. So God is saying the first wisdom for living is to have the mentality of the ant. Don't be caught unawares. Prepare every profit you made. Keep something aside. Keep something aside. Prepare. Always prepare. Always prepare. We have a culture of waste. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself ahead for the day of battle and prepare your phone. Every business, everyone who has a mentality to run a good business must have the mentality because life is full of twists and turns. And Pharaoh saw it. Seven years of scarcity, seven years of abundance. And that was what he saw and he was confused. He saw... Fatted cows swallowing up the tiny, uh, being swallowed by the tiny ones. And he said, what kind of ritual is this? And Joseph said, this is the, the revelation of life. Seven years of abundance, seven years of scarcity. So you prepare in the days of abundance because whether you like it or not, everyone, nobody can be rich twice. Everyone stumbles into wealth. What you do with that opportunity is what determines how far you go in the realm of wealth. That's the truth. Great men are men who knew how to maximize opportunity. Maximize opportunity. So everyone today, I, like I said, every preacher should become an entrepreneur. The four rivers that flow from Eden, only one is microphone. Only one. I have businesses. Dr. Fidel has spoken of businesses. We separate businesses from church. In church, you commit an offense, we pardon you. In our business, you commit an offense, we fire you. We fire you. We, don't, we, we fire you straight. We started the bank, and I'm one of the directors of the bank. And we were sitting down one day, and they were saying something about somebody, and somebody said, at the grace of God, I said, no, not here. I said, not here, not here. He was shocked, because I happened to be like the pastor. He was he's just a believer. I said, not here, not here. He said, no, we are talking. I said, not here. This is a business setting. So we come with the mentality. Because that is what it takes to run a business. Are you following what I'm talking about? There was, well, the president, there was something he said, the president said to myself and those who came. He said, and Reverend Julia was trying to remind him of that statement. He said, I wish the, the Christians can take their faith as serious like the Muslims. Can take their faith as serious. They are so committed to their businesses. So committed, so addicted, and they have a community mentality. I was a Muslim, I can tell you. There are things we saw, we can't see. But the church is, you see a pastor stands behind the pulpit and becomes so arrogant. I must call a spade a spade. Are you a farmer? <laughs> so we come with that mentality. As far as we are concerned, we are, we are pointing out our truth. But there are, there are, there, there, there are things you say. See, there are times, eh, there are some hurdles of business that you keep in the dark. Not necessarily because it's evil as it were, but it doesn't, it doesn't picture the brand positively. Are you following what I'm talking about? 
The ant has a mentality. It doesn't just save. It stores. It stores. We have a generation of wasters. Even in the church. Wasters. If you as, as a preacher you understand this. Even you will live longer. You will live longer. I don't counsel. Let it be 500 people. I don't counsel them beyond one hour. And I, I, women are the, you know, I used to, when you cancel women, they are easy to cancel. Because they always have the answers to their problem. <laughs> my husband left home. My husband has not been coming home. In fact, I know what I'll be doing. I'll just be in prayer. I said, that's the answer. <laughs> Can I see the next person, please? <laughs> just be in prayer. The next person, please. They always have answers to their problem. So I don't stress myself. I said, that's it. Just be in prayers. Keep faith. And God will do it. Please, next person. Because if you are not careful in counseling, some people can counsel the Holy Ghost out of you. <laughs> it saves. It stores. So we must have that culture of having reservoirs. Amen. Your today's prosperity is to arrest your tomorrow's adversity. Your today's prosperity is to arrest your tomorrow's Adversity. Africa, unfortunately, you have too many poor people who are trying to live rich. Meanwhile, the average rich person lives poor. Get, get close to certain men of wealth and influence. You will see how simple their life is. One day, I happened to stay in a hotel with um, Bill Gates was in the same hotel. And I was staying in a penthouse. And he was staying in a suite. So I looked at my life. <laughs> I looked at my life. I said, who did this to me? <laughs> this man was in a suite. And he wasn't even telling them, it's too big. I'm leaving in the morning. I have a flight in the morning. It's too big. I'm flying in the morning. And I was in a penthouse with three rooms empty. Nobody. You see, it's, it's an African thing. So I tell them, I said, no, just get, say, no, 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 apostle. We honor you. <laughs> I understand that. But it's an African thing. One time I went to buy, I went somewhere. I was in Johannesburg. So I was walking through a shopping mall. I saw a very nice suit. Nice suit. I said, wow, this is wonderful. So I moved close to the shop and I looked at the suit. I saw pictures of great men. So that means that's where the shop that's where they come for their shopping. I said, this is wonderful. So I picked the suit. I said, how much is this? They said, $300,000. I said, what? <laughs> One suit? This was 2009 or so. One suit? They said, yes. I said, I hate it. <laughs> so I said, I don't like it again. So I said, no. I said, these are the kind of suits that I don't like. So if a friend of mine said, no, to tell them you come back. I said, come back for my funeral. <laughs> what am I coming back to do? Come back for, no, I'm not coming back. No. We have no maintenance culture. Everyone wants to live big. Everyone wants to live a life of waste. I, <laughs> amen. I love good wristwatches. I love wristwatches. So whenever I go to London or some place, I just, I just window shop. I window shop. I look at it. Yeah, nice. So I went somewhere near Chelsea about. And I saw a place where they sell watches. Ah, I said, this is nice. So I looked at one, very simple, but very you know, attractive, nice. So I said, how much is this? I said, man, I like this. I must get this. How much? They said, three million pounds. I said, will you tell me the time Jesus is coming? <laughs> <laughs> and the man started laughing. Obviously, he was a Christian. He said, no. I said, no, if it will tell me the day of rapture. For what? And there are, there are Africans now. There's a level you get to that means nothing to you. But there are Africans who are still struggling, but they, want to, they have this status mentality. But you see, have you seen, he was talking about the, 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 the Arabs and Dubais. You see that, that attire? That's what they wear. They are not after your LV. They are not after your DNG. So the wisdom of the spider is that he uses today's prosperity to arrest tomorrow's adversity. Not everything affordable is acceptable. Not everything affordable is acceptable. When you buy what you don't need, when you don't need it, 
you will lack it when you need it. Number two, the conness. He spoke about the conness. He said the conness. This is where spirituality comes into bear. He spoke about the conness. The conness said there are people not strong. Not strong. So the conness are like the rabbits. You know this little rabbit. They build their house on the rock because they are feeble. And this is where spirituality comes in. We are talking with his excellency. And he said something. And I smiled. He said, do you know that most of the battles in business and economy and governance is spiritual? It's spiritual. There are people, there is a limit from their, from their family, their background that they cannot go beyond the level. No matter who they meet. A young man prayed to meet the king. Prayed so hard to meet the king. And finally he was sitting at the, at, at the waiting room waiting for the king. When it was time for them to call him, they met him sleeping, snoring. And that's foundational. There are spiritual dimensions to matters of business. And that is one of the reasons we are here. Not just to give information, but to speak words. That every such demonic covering is ruined away. Every such demonic covering is shattered. In the name of Jesus. These are people feeble. You see, and they build to, to avoid being crushed. Sir, my, in this world of, of, of iniquity, the greatest need of every man is divine security. In this world of iniquity, the greatest need of every man is divine security. You need to be assured and need to be covered. Am I talking to somebody? You need to be assured and you need to be covered. Listen, most politicians around the world, oh my God. Most top politicians who you see accelerating in some realms, business and economy and all that, they have spiritual backings. Oh, they have spiritual backings, I can tell you. They have spiritual backings. They have, they have people who constantly speak. Look at the Bible. In Numbers chapter 22, all of a sudden, a man called Balak made a projection and saw the acceleration of Israel and hired a prophet to cast them, to decimate them. And Balaam came to make pronouncements on them. Yes. Balaam was part of them. They hired him against them. And that's what happens to the body. Someone amongst us will be raised to fight us. Someone amongst us, someone in the church will be raised to cause dissension and division in the church. And I'm telling you that's what's happening now. We are people, people are, the Bible now is now being preached as a textbook. People are becoming more logical than spiritual. Somebody was trying, in my country, was trying to let us know that God's a God of love. That the fire that came down on Mount Carmel didn't come from God. That God cannot destroy his own. That the fire came from Satan. So I, I laughed. I said, wow, I never knew you can pray to God and Satan will answer. <laughs> because we are trying to become logical. And 1 Corinthians 2.14 said, the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. Because they are spiritually discerned. You need a projection. There is a dimension of revelation God shows you. Because before God will expand the man, he must check the level of his vision. What seest thou? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. You see, I've seen an almond tree. He said, thou hast seen well, for we hasten my word to perform it. What seest thou? Jeremiah 24, 3. What seest thou? Zechariah 4 verse 2. Zechariah 5 verse 2. What seest thou? Amos 7, 8. Amos 8, 2. What seest thou? In Psalm 34 verse 5, he said, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. In Luke 6, 22, he said, the lamp of the body is the eye. If the eye is single, thy whole body shall be full of light. When he brought the creatures before Adam, he said, he said to Adam, Genesis 2, 19, give them a name. Whatsoever Adam called them was so. But God brought them before him to see what he will call them. Sometimes you need to Connect to the Holy Spirit for insight. Hear what Reverend Julian said. That certain people are paid just to just sense. To sense. <laughs> and they pay you, you must sense correctly. <laughs> you, you must sense correctly. People are just paid, people are hired just to do that. That's the spiritual dimension of business. So it's beyond just having board meetings. Now, nobody knows that there are people in offices who are paid to just have a feeling. Who are paid to meditate. So there's a spiritual dimension. That's what the con is. The con is are soft, are feeble. Or they hide in the rock. 
in this world of aggression and wickedness, hide in the rock. Jesus is the rock. The Bible says in Matthew 7 from verse 24, it says, He that hear the sins of mine and doeth them, it's like the man who built his house on the rock. Hide in the rock. Amen. I said, Amen. amen. And he talked about the locust. He said, The locust, the locust that they have no leader, everyone is busy. Everyone is busy. Everyone knows they have an assignment. Everyone knows they have an assignment. They go in bands. So we must have a responsibility mentality. Everybody must be responsible. Everybody must be responsible. To understand what they are wired to do. So you don't end up in the... One of the reasons I hate hell. Hell. Amongst other reasons, one of the reasons I don't want to go to hell. It's just a room of idiots. Drunk are there. Killer are there. All kinds of idiots in one room. So even the man that lied will be in the same room with the assassin. Are you following what I'm talking about? Even the man that all he said was refusing to accept Christ. He lived a good life, but never accepted Christ. will be in the same room with a corrupt politician. It's terrible. So when Jesus was talking about the, the, the parable, was talking about the, the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. When Lazarus, okay, you know, there are people who read that story and they, they try to esteem poverty. Listen, listen. <laughs> so Lazarus, at least Lazarus went to heaven. No, wait. Wait. Have you noticed that Lazarus, this, this is humorous. Have you noticed that even in heaven, the rich man was sending Lazarus on errand? From hell. <laughs> he, had the, he, he carried the mentality of a rich man even to hell. He said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to dip his hand in water. <laughs> From hell. So the reason that <laughs> the reason that man went to hell was not because he was rich, was because he was not hospitable. He wasn't kind. God is not against you having money. God is against money having you. Amen. Jesus said one time, he said, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples asked, ah, who then can be saved? If they were broke, they would have said, thank God we are not rich. He said, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they said, how oh, then can be saved? It's like when Jesus was talking of marriage. He said, Moses allowed the certificate of divorce because of the hardness of your heart. So what is divorce? It's two hardened people refusing to agree. He said, because of the hardness of your heart. And the disciples said, wow, we are stuck. That's what they said. We are stuck. We are stuck. Because Jesus said, God's plan is that they be together. That a man leaves his father and mother and cleave to his wife. That's the plan of God. Roll through the scriptures. Just keep rolling. Keep rolling through the scriptures. Go on. Go on. Keep going on. The disciples said, we are stuck. Why did they say we are stuck? It's because I'm sure they were having marital crisis. Close to Jesus. Yet having marital crisis. And that's the problem we have because we think that everything is all up to God. There is a, before I got married, I had so many negative things about marriage. I come from a poly, 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 polygamous home. My father has three wives only. what it takes to have a good home. And Reverend Julian, and I discovered having a good home is beyond spirituality. You must understand the female gender and the male gender. You must know how they are wired. You must know how women are wired. There are three things about every woman. Number one, every woman likes to talk. There is no quiet woman. If she's quiet, that is not her favorite topic. If a woman is not talking, that is not her favorite topic. They like communication. You see, Eve was looking for who to talk to. Adam was not available, so she spoke to Eve. Satan. <laughs> Eve wanted to talk to somebody. Adam was not available, so she spoke to Satan. So sometimes, when my wife is talking, I just nod my head. I'm only praying. She should not ask me, what last did I say? <laughs> so she's talking. I said, mm, wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. So one day she was talking and talking. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, what's yeah, yeah, yeah? What did I say last? 
I said, the journey. He said, what journey? <laughs> How do you woo a woman? By talking. Right? You enter the relationship by talking. How do you keep her? Keep talking. <laughs> Communication. So you can't just say, uh, as a pastor, a spiritual person, oh, I'm praying. No, you can't keep a home like that. That is why we have so many people who are sound on the pulpit, but they have marital crisis. Because the thing is about prayers. No, I knew that. I knew that. So when my wife is talking, I give all the attention. I may not be interested. There are some things you'll be saying, I ask myself, okay, do I need this information now? <laughs> For example, he said, my husband, somebody came to the house. I said, okay. Can you imagine? They were knocking the gate, knocking the gate. I was wondering, where did the securities go? I said, wow, wonderful. I was wondering, and the other security man, who came to the house? <laughs> the other security man, we need to fire him. He doesn't know his job. Can you imagine that? The guy was outside. I'm like, yeah. Who came to the house? Why are you in a hurry? <laughs> because they never go straight to the point. So you have to keep listening. The second thing I did, I'm telling you how, how my home, we've been married 20 years. We never had a fight. Not prayer. Never had a fight. And nobody's pretending. It's understanding. The second thing I discovered is every woman likes to be appreciated. Reverend Julian, there are women that will make their hair today and they'll walk in front of you ten times. You should know. <laughs> they like to be appreciated. You finish eating the food, you appreciate them. Not you eat the food, you lick your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Was it Jesus that cooked the food? Some things we do... Let me round up. I'm taking too much time. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank the person who made the food. Your wife has changed her hair five times and you're not aware. No commendation from you. And I'm going to say something very, very nasty now. I got information concerning Kenya. Kenya men change. Take care of women. How can you split bills with your wife? Are you not ashamed? You are splitting bills. You are a man with beards. You are splitting bills. No! That's not, that's not manhood. Every role a wife or a woman will play is complimentary. No, they take you out. They take you, you go out on a dinner date and they pay the bills and you, you, you could walk out of that place with your two legs. <laughs> Every man loves to be appreciated. What was I saying before I said that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you have been personal. <laughs> Every man likes to be defended. I'm giving you tips. This is not a marriage seminar. This is not my, every man likes to be defended. If your wife has a fight with somebody, join her to fight. Don't find out what happened. Join her to fight. Join her to fight first. Then when she's gone, you, go, you call the man and say, my brother, say, save my home. Save my home. <laughs> save my home. <laughs> my wife was telling me something one day about somebody. I've not even asked what happened. He said, look at what they did. I said, how dare they? How dare they can't do that? He said, why are you shouting? I said, how can they do that to you? He said, can you imagine? Calm down. I said, no, I won't, I won't calm down. No. I'm not going to calm down. How would they do that? No, no. He said, what did they do to me? I said, they shouldn't do anything. I don't want to know what they did. And I walked to the guy. I said, relax, relax, relax. Because if you rebuke her in public, you become the topic. And most men don't understand that. You don't do that. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking so much in favor of the women now. Okay, for the women. Every man, to keep a home, every man has an ego. No matter how anointed he is, he has an ego. Treat him like a king. He will treat you like a queen. I was talking in California, no, New York. And I said, please learn to honor your husbands. Honor. Honor. So I was doing that and bending my knees. Honor. I could see the wife were looking at me. Honor. 
I said, what the hell is he saying? Hang up. And that is a culture that we don't have in the West. So the, 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 the locust are a people that are responsible. God Almighty, when he wants to, Reverend Julian mentioned that when God wants to bless a man, he sends him a man. You know, in, I saw something in Psalm 17, 14. He said, men are the hands of God. So whenever God wants to extend his hand, he sent a man. Now, Jesus was talking to somebody in John chapter 5 verse 6. He said, how long have you been here by the pool? It was, a, it was a question of duration. How long have you been here? The man's response is, I have no man. So I've been here this long because I lack a man. Look at the blessings of Job. Do you know Job was stranded? But the lifting and the turnaround of Job was around Job. Read Job chapter 42. The Bible says every man gave a piece of money to Job. And the next thing, he said, God bless the latter end of Job. So everything you need is in a man. It's in a man. When the curse on Reuben was being averted, Moses came and said, let Reuben not die. Let not his men be few. Let not his men be few. Men are assets. Sir, it is good to be a gifted man, but it's better to have the gift of men. Can I say this to you ministers? It is good to have an assistant pastor. But it's better to be the assisted pastor. You need the gift of men. In the name of Jesus. May you be gifted with the right man. I say may you be gifted with the right man. May the borders of nation, the tentacles of nation open up to you with the right man. Ah, contact is everything. We're about using a place in Nigeria for a program. And a com <laughs> I don't know what they call commissioner here. A state commissioner sent a message that they should tell us to leave the hall. Now, we paid. We did everything. It was a contract. Said they should tell, the contract is canceled. We should move out of the hall. And it was a crowd. So some brothers went behind, held their hands. Oh, Lord, the heart of a king is in the palm. So they told me about it. So I said, what's the problem? They said, we should leave the hall. So I pick up my phone. I called the governor. I said, I want to see you. I want to see you in the meeting. He said, I'll come. I said, I want you to be in the meeting. Now, the guy who's a commissioner works in the office of the governor. It wasn't prayer. It was contact. Because it's my son. I said, I want to see you in the meeting. So he said, is there any problem? I said, I want to see you. So we're in the meeting, and the commissioner saw the entourage. He was confused who is there. So he came with the paper telling us to leave, and the governor saw him. He said, what are you doing here? He said, um, um. He said, did they pay? Yes. Did they sign the contract? Yes. So why do you want to chase them out? And he heard that the guy be giving a query. Before I was leaving, the commissioner came. I was begging me. He said, please, I, I, I didn't mean it that way. I said, well, <laughs> contact. Somebody was praying. Somebody was praying and speaking in, in, in tongues and capital letters. And somebody made a phone call. Contact. So God needs to send you a man. The right people. Men are the hands of God. In the name of Jesus, receive the right person. Amen. Receive the right person. Amen. The right man. Amen. There are individuals that become institutions over time. There are individuals that God plans in your life and they become institutions. And God wants to give you not just a man, a customized helper. Amen. I discovered that most people who are in my life today, top people who are in my life, their connection to me is not on the platform of being a man of God. I noticed it. It's on the platform of being a friend. I have a friend who is so rich. If I want to anoint him, we say, oh, don't stain me. That's how unchristianly he is. I said, can I put oil on your head? He said, oh, apostle, don't stain me. Put it on my palm. I said, your head. Say, oh. I said, but we are friends. You know why? They see some qualities in you. 
There are so many people God has brought certain men before you in business, but you don't keep to time. You lie. There's no integrity. Nothing. So you, you see, you must understand that most times under promise over deliver. Under promise over deliver. If you can get it fixed in, 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 in one week, tell them three weeks. And in one week it's ready. They're like, wow, you are so far under promise over deliver. That's one of the ways to keeping great men around you. But as some of us, we over promise, we under deliver. Now, let me tell you what I do in church. I tell them in church, as you see, I am not a healer. I've never healed the sick. So if you are coming here, look up to Jesus to heal you. I under promise. I don't give you the assurance that everybody who comes there will be healed. No, I don't give you that. The, the man that was at the gates of beautiful, that Peter and John healed, he was around in the, in the time of Christ. Jesus passed him. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus passed him. And yet the Bible says he healed them all. And the man was there. So you do not overpromise. There are many of us who God has planted great people around. <laughs> oh Lord. Amen. 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 God will give us grace Amen. and give us wisdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The spider walks with his hand. That's the final one. And I don't want to pray in the next five minutes. The spider, the wisdom for greatness, the fourth is the spider. Understand the dimension of the spider. The spider works and believes in what it works. This spirit of debt, I don't know why every nation in Africa is indebted. My country borrowed money from China to build railway in Niger Republic. Please do everything you can. I understand in business sometimes you need to take loans. But do everything you can. Try your best to stay away from debt. Try. Try. Try your best to stay away from debt. Debt, D-E-B-T, means desiring enjoyment before time. Desiring enjoyment. Deliberate enjoyment brings trouble. Debt. Debt is using your ability to pay for your liability. Debt is using your past to pay for your present. Do everything you can to become like the ant. Believe in what you work for. You know, one day I was, I had a pastor who was, um, he's full-time now. He was my banker. He's now full-time with us as a pastor. So one day they came to where we're building, we're building our first auditorium. Then, so they looked around, they said, oh, this project is going up with speed. But we help you complete it. I was excited because I thought it was favor. I said, we help you complete it. I said, Jesus, you complete it? They said, we'll complete everything. I said, thank you, Lord. He said, and we'll do that less than four, five months. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what we waited for <laughs> has come to pass. See what the Lord. And he said, so we need, we need to give you a loan on self-recognition. I say, in the name of Jesus, out. <laughs> so I said, no. Sometimes there are some depths that makes you tell God is too slow. There are some depths that make you tell God is too slow. China is one of the wealthiest, I mean, one of the, because of their, in, in my country now, there is a Chinese police station. China is interested in every nation. Every nation. And the truth is, it's slavery. They'll give you loan with such high stake. And people are running. But thank God that we are getting leaders who are breaking themselves of it. And God is going to raise up individuals who will come with the move of the spirit and the mindset of God's wealth and deliver nations. Yeah. Do you know you can see the president today if you want to see him? No matter his busy schedule, you can see him. Just tell him, tell them, I'm paying 50% of the national debt. You'll see him the next minute. <laughs> Pro
protocols will be broken. Are you following what I'm talking about? Pro say, I'm paying 50%. When you don't have a source, you can't be a voice. When you don't have a source, you must first be a source before you become a voice. And God is raising up people, Joseph's, Joseph's of Arimathea, that will preserve the body of Christ. Arimathea, that will preserve the body of Christ. When Jesus died, his body was not given to prayer warriors. Because prayer warriors can pray and worry themselves. His body was given to a Joseph of someone who could preserve it, someone of means. So that tells us that those that will preserve the body of Christ this end time are people who are blessed by God. Let's be upstanding as we pray. Let's be upstanding as we pray. We had them. Um, how many of us have been in the program at the KICC? Okay. We had a prophetic word yesterday. If you remember, was it yesterday? about a young lady who the Lord said was holding a picture of her sister who was mad in Canada. We got an information today that the, the girl is okay. <laughs> senses restored. And she is in the house. She was on the streets in Canada and the Lord spoke about it here. That her mind is restored. So that tells us he said, God is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all we ask or think. So God, by his spirit, is bringing light on that business. The spirit and grace for acceptance. See, look at this. Put your hand down. No matter what you carry, you need somebody to recommend you. He was the lamb of the world, but nobody knew until John the Baptist said, Behold! Men of means and favor suddenly turn their back on you because somebody condemned you. So you need someone to recommend you. No matter the anointing on your life, somebody has to recommend to say, this man can do it. There are people with good experience, good expertise, good delivery, but they have no contact. Nobody to recommend them. In the name of Jesus, I feel led by the Spirit of God for us to pray for the grace for acceptance. Acceptance. Paul said, pray for me that I might be accepted. 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 He said, let him wash his feet in butter. Let him be accepted of his brethren. Oh Lord, I receive the grace for uncommon acceptance. Uncommon acceptance. Uncommon acceptance. Uncommon acceptance. And we're going to pray for that. That you be loved unconditionally. Come on, acceptance. You see, three major things that will help your business thrive. God's servant of Julian mentioned the first one. Have the mentality to solve a problem. Solve a problem. Solve a problem. In fact, you are wired, you are created to solve a problem. Your destiny is discovering the problem you are sent to solve. That's why you came to this world. God had concluded it before you came. Okay, how many of you have a phone? I've only said this uh, around there. How many of you have a phone? You have a new phone, phone. I said phone, a mobile phone. All right, put your hand down. How many of you bought your mobile phone brand new? How many of you bought it yourself? How many of you are the first, the pers first person to use your phone? That's a lie. The company that made your phone used it. They put in Wi-Fi. They put in data, they did everything, and when it was confirmed to be working, they wiped it and they put a warranty. They dismembered it, put the battery somewhere, put this somewhere, and they packaged it and released to the market. Do you understand me? Before you came to this world, in the realms of the spirit, God had confirmed. You lived before you were born. That's why I said Jesus is the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. So before Adam even came, Jesus died. That is why he said, before I formed thee in thy mother's womb, I knew you. So he allowed you to come here because in the realm of the spirit, you already succeeded. If 
you are not succeeded in that realm, you won't be in this realm. So, now, what is destiny? Discovering what I was created and configured to do in that realm, wherein I succeeded. So, like you said, when you know you are sent to solve a problem. I said, my, my strength is not fasting or prayer. My strength is I love people. I love to see needs met. I, lo I just love to see needs met. I hate to see people in pain. That's my me mentality and idea of pastoring. Most of our people in church, I'm not just their pastor, I'm their father. I, I like to see needs met. My first jet was bought by two people who I trained, Reverend Julian, I helped them. They had nothing. They were stranded. I stood by them. When God changed their story one time, they saw me driving us in order to catch a flight. They kept quiet and spoke to themselves. The next thing they said, I should come to an airport. I went there. I saw a plane. They said, look at it. Do you like it? I said, eh? <laughs> if I like it. He said, get in. I got in. I sat down. It was war getting me out of that plane. I sat down. The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. <laughs> It's the man that David lifted up that became his mighty man. So, know what you are the, the problem you are creating. And that's where passion comes in. Because passion is having that, that desire to see a need met. Even if it means you losing all you have. Many businessmen, thank God Kumi is here, and he can testify, many businessmen were at a point where they almost gave up. They almost gave up. The secret of men are in their stories, not their cars. When you, when you sit with great men, I like, sir, I like sitting down to, to ask men stories. Tell me how you almost failed. One man, one great man was asking me, he said, why are you so negative-minded? I said, I'm not, sir. He said, anytime you see me, you tell me, tell me your challenges. Why don't you tell me, ask of my, my successes? I said, no, because the success is normal. But I need to draw courage from that challenge. The ability to keep keeping on. That the business is almost folding up. You said, no, I won't give up. You reinvest. Am I communicating now? We're going to pray. God, I receive grace for uncommon acceptance. I will be accepted. I will be accepted. I will be accepted. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Grace for uncommon acceptance. Grace for uncommon acceptance. Parashoka parada samintos. Brekosi parate larazas. Sukotabayata. Zile dobosha. Bali cross kaleta bai Rukonda Likosi Barata Do Shalika Inta Sukarides Kotali Shalima Belorogo Shatia I receive grace for Koma Septan I receive grace for Koma Septan Mando Skalara Diso Blessed be your name in Jesus' name Amen. You are not a man oh. You are not a man You are the God that opened us, no man can shut. You are not a man, no. Oh. You are not a man, no. Oh. You are the God of everything. Who is Irene? Who is Irene? Shahale, Shahale. Irene Shahale. Is that your name? Is that your name? What's your name? What's your name? Irene Shahale. Come here. You are not a man, no. You are the God that opened us. You are not a man, oh. you are not a man, you are the God Check. of everything, no one like you. Pick her up, pick her up, get up. You recover all. Amen, amen. You will recover all. Amen. Don't forget a prophecy for one is a prophecy for all. 
in the name 